Hi, it's Heather from Thick It Works, and today we're going to build this beautiful gothic writing desk and chair set. These pieces are the latest addition to the 1 12th scale abandoned boudoir diorama, which of course is my current obsession. Okay, here we go. Once you've cut all the components for your gothic desk set, it's important to take a few minutes to get organized before we begin assembling. There are duplicates of almost all of the pieces, so you'll want to arrange them on your work surface in sets of two or perhaps more, depending on how many pieces there are of that particular item. Taking the time to get organized at the beginning makes the rest of the process a lot easier. I'm going to begin the assembly process by putting together these two slotted strips using Zig two-way glue. Now these strips are intended to form the backbone of the cubby holes. So it's very important to get the slots lined up as close to perfectly as possible. Next, we can put together these three sets of two shorter slotted panels. These will interlock with the longer one to create those adorable cubbies. Again, it's super important to keep the alignment as close to perfect as possible because in the long run, any slight discrepancy at this stage will create big problems down the road. Okay, now we're moving on to the desktop, and you can see that there are two panels here that have slots. These get glued together, one on top of the other. And then the plain desktop panel gets glued directly on top. There are two plain front leg assemblies for the front of the desk. The two plain ones get glued together. Again, aligning all of the edges as close to perfectly as possible. Paying close attention to the construction tabs at the top. Next, there are two decorative panels with exactly the same shape, but with some cutouts in the inner corners. These get layered together, one on top of the other. And if you line it up just right, those little cutouts will remain clear. Once both assemblies have been glued together, it's time to layer them one on top of the other and allow them to cure. These pieces are the side panels for the desk legs. There are four pieces all together and two of them get layered together, creating a total of two of these decorative panels. glue them up and let them cure. Next up is this decorative archway motif that will be glued onto the upper edge of the back of the desk. These two get layered together and placed under weights. This is the face frame for the cubby holes. There are two pieces and they get layered one on top of the other. These two plain pieces create a shelf that sits on top of the cubbies. They get layered together. This is the decorative back panel for the desk. These two pieces do not have any construction slots in them at all. They get layered together so that they create a single unit. You might find it helpful, as I did, to reach for a brayer to help press the pieces together before adding heavy weights on top. 
These two panels do have construction slots in addition to the decorative elements and they get layered together. It's worth it to take your time to get the alignment just right. And once it is, using a brayer can help press everything together. This little decorative panel gets glued onto the front of the desk legs. Just eyeball the placement and press it into place. There's an additional frame piece that goes right on top. A pair of tweezers really comes in handy when working with these very small pieces. These are side panels. They will enclose the exterior sides of the cubbies. They're a single panel with a little framework piece that gets glued right on top. And here are the pieces for the cubbies. They slot together and should just press into place. There. Okay, now we're about to start working with super glue, so make certain that you follow all safety precautions. As usual, I'm reaching for Star Bond, applying it to the surface of my pieces, and then smoothing it out using an old gift card. A needle tool is helpful to hold the piece while you work on one end and then the other. The super glue gets applied to both sides of all of the components. This hardening process will turn this flimsy chipboard into something that feels like a hardwood. It's just magical. But it does produce fumes, so make sure you've got adequate ventilation. And mind your fingers. Nobody likes getting their fingers super glued together, but if that does happen, you can help loosen the bond by applying some vegetable oil to the affected area. It will help to loosen the grip of the glue. Apply the hardening process to all of the components. And once everything has been hardened, we can join together the two large back panels for the desk. Once everything's aligned, place heavy weights on top and allow them to cure. Once the face frame for the cubby assembly has been hardened, we can work on putting it all together. It's easiest if you place the face frame on your work surface and then align one edge of the cubby hole framework at a time. There's still a little bit of give to this internal structure, so you can hold it in place with one hand and then finesse the gluing of single areas one at a time. Adjusting as you go. Taking the time to get everything lined up correctly at this point will pay big dividends in the long run. And now the assembly is complete.
I use lots of sandpaper and emery boards to clean it up. Now we can start assembling all of these components. First, I'm going to insert the front leg assembly into the bottom of the desktop. It fits right into those slots, and I'll keep it perpendicular by lining it up with a 1-2-3 block. Now I know that as I glue this into place, it's going to be a perfect 90 degree angle. After a few seconds, the bond is secure. And now I'm ready to apply glue to the interior of this assembly. It's very sturdy. These two construction tabs fit into the slots on the back of the desk. I like to lift the piece off of the work surface using a sturdy box to make this a little easier. Once the tabs are in place and everything's pressed together, it's time to add super glue. It won't take long to cure. The next step will be to line this up and add these side panels. Again, I like to work off of the work surface on a rigid square box. It just makes this a little easier. I align one set of the legs and glue them in place. And then I'm able to align the other set of legs and glue them in place. And then we'll repeat the procedure on the other side. Aligning first one set of legs and then the other. There. At this point, I pause to do a little, okay, a lot of sanding. And once the finish is smooth to the touch, I'm ready to move on. And that means adding the cubby assembly. I've been waiting for this moment. I just line it up to the best of my ability, keeping it as close to centered on the desktop as I possibly can. And then I hold it in place while I apply a bead of super glue. Then I add a few drops of super glue at the very top of the assembly as well. There. So cool. Next, it's time to add the shelf that sits on top of the cubbies. It too gets centered by eye. There are no slots. Once you're happy with the placement, add super glue and hold it in place until the glue sets. Now we can add these decorative side panels, and they're sized to slide perfectly between the desktop and the lower edge of the shelf. Once they're in place, add a little super glue and hold them until the bond is secure. Repeat the process on the other side. The piece is feeling incredibly sturdy at this point. Now we have this decorative element to add 
at the upper edge of the desk back. I just line it up and then apply super glue through the apertures of the decorative elements. That will be plenty of adhesive to hold it in place. To seal some of the edges where the striations are a little apparent, I'm adding Popper's Bondo, which is just baking soda applied to super glue. It cures the super glue immediately and you can sand it without any delay. This will create an ultra hard and durable finish. There. Okay, now it's time to work on the chair. There are three panels that make up the back of the chair. Two of them have construction slots and one does not. The two with slots get layered on top of the plain panel. There are a total of four of these side panels for the chair legs and they get layered one on top of the other for two sets of two. There are three of these decorative panels for the front chair legs, and all three get layered one on top of the other. These two slotted panels make up the base of the seat. Once all of these pieces have been assembled, it's time to apply super glue hardening to all of them. And once they've cured, we can neaten up the edges with sandpaper and metal files until all of the slots fit perfectly. I'm going to begin the process by putting the front leg assembly into the bottom of the seat. Once that's in place, I can begin adding the side leg assemblies. Once everything cures, I neaten it up with metal files and sandpaper before slotting the back of the seat into the back of the chair and then gluing everything together. The final touch is to add the plain panel on top of the seat. The construction on both of these pieces is now complete and they're certainly usable as is. However, I couldn't resist going to town with distressing both of these pieces. So I use a lot of force to smooth over and round the edges of all of the joins and frankly the sanding and smoothing is the longest and most difficult part of this process but once it's complete I turn to the distressing I'm using a whole series of needle files in order to create gouges and long cracks in the surface of the edges of the desk. I 
I admit it, this part is really fun. It's a little scary at first, but once you get started and you realize that the piece is so sturdy, you're not going to break it, you can really exert a lot of force and create the kind of damage that your imagination tells you would have happened over the centuries. It's this part of the process where we start to tell the story, where the history of the piece begins to emerge through all of the mark making that most captures my imagination. Really, the construction of the piece is just a means to an end. It's the destruction of the piece that's the most satisfying to me. I try to think about the ways that wood weathers naturally and the kinds of damage that a well-loved piece like this might receive. I'm especially enamored of creating these cracks in the edges of the wood. Once we apply final finishes, some real soul will begin to emerge from this piece. I'm experimenting with a new finishing technique using India inks. And I have to say, I really love how this piece turned out and I will definitely be using this technique again. It involves putting down a single layer of pigment and allowing that to dry. Now with these India inks, I can dry them immediately using a heat tool. So it's actually an even faster process than painting with acrylics would be. The inks soak into the material and pool up on the surface depending on how much of the super glue has penetrated the surface of the chipboard, leaving a really organic looking wood finish. Now this first layer of brown gives a nice rich tone and I like it a lot but I would really prefer to see some nuance and by nuance I mean more than one type of color on the surface so even though we have some modulation of browns I'm also going to be adding the rich dark red of the terracotta ink in another pass once we've completely coated this one and allowed it to dry you can already see the nuance of the finish beginning to emerge at this point I think it was about now that I realized that I had found a new favorite technique and then once everything has been dried, I actually sand the finish back. Not everywhere, but in selected locations, revealing more of the underlying chipboard surface in some areas than in others. Now I come in with the terracotta ink and apply it especially to the areas that have been sanded. Confident that the tooth that's opened up in the underlying chipboard will allow more of that color to penetrate in those areas. I love how quickly these inks dry. And really, there is no end to the number of layers that you can create using this technique. It 
it looks a little startling at this point because the terracotta pigment is so intense. But once we dry it and apply additional sanding passes, we'll begin to see that multi-layered finish emerge. As we sand it back, we have not only the multiple colors of brown and the rich orange tones of the terracotta, but also the exposed chipboard, which has a sort of grayish tinge to it. I make additional weathering passes with the Van Dyke Brown blotting and smoothing it out using a piece of paper towel. Now I'll be adding some detailing with this rich gold ink. I'm applying it with a micro brush. You can add as much or as little gold detailing as you like. I'm an over the top kind of girl, so I add gold on just about every single edge. Unlike a regular bristled brush, these micro brushes really help to control the distribution of the ink. Now, admittedly, this is a little lurid, even for me, which is why a final pass with sandpaper is going to tone everything down and again add another layer of storytelling and history. The final portion of this finish is to add several layers of straight super glue on top and then smooth it out quickly with a piece of paper towel. Now it heats up and yes, there is always the threat that your paper towel could stick to the surface. So it's very important to move your hand quickly. But the final result looks like ancient varnish. I absolutely love it. I continue to add layers of super glue and then buff it out with the paper towel and then check the finish against the light looking for areas that still appear matte and adding more super glue as needed. I think I may have added about four layers in all. And the final result. I hope that you've enjoyed this demonstration of constructing and finishing this medieval writing desk and chair. I had a wonderful time designing the files and putting the whole thing together. As always, Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Until next time, bye.